seven trillion naira at the end of December 2018. Senior de Democrats have responded by accusing of committing a gross of The All Progressives Congress has vowed to punish the Ogun State Governor Ibikule Amoso. trillion naira at the end of December 2018. Senior de Democrats have responded by accusing of committing a gross of The All Progressives Congress has vowed to punish the Ogun State Governor Ibikule Amoso. trillion naira at the end of December 2018. Senior de Democrats have responded by accusing of committing a gross of The All Progressives Congress has vowed to punish the Ogun State Governor Ibikule Amoso. And many thanks for joining us on News Text today. I am Obozegirus. You're welcome. Now the details of the, the news making the headlines. Apostle Suleiman arrives London for Open Heavens 2019. Still from local scene, Archbishop Margaret Idahosa celebrates 76th birthday. From foreign scene, Pakistan plane army aircraft crashes into residential area, killing 17 persons. And on business, St. Dangote's refinery processing unit leaves China. And on sport, we have to prepare for life without Messi, says Baku president. Join us for the details of the news just after this time out. Welcome back. News from local saying Archbishop Margaret Idahosa celebrates 76th birthday. Nigerian preacher, pastor, author, evangelist, and the Archbishop of the Church of God Mission International, Margaret Idahosa, on Monday, 29th July, celebrated her 76th birthday. The supergenarian, who is the first African female bishop and wife of late Archbishop Benson Hidausa, appreciated God for yet another year of her life as she turned 76. Celebrating this new phase, her son Bishop Fabi Dahosa took to his Instagram handle to eulogize his mom. He described her as a trailblazer and extraordinary minister who showed forth God's power in tearing down bills. This was also followed by felicitation, felicitations from Laura Idahosa, wife of Fabi Idahosa, and the Christian Women Fellowship International, Germany. <laughs>
also the spiritual son of the soap-taught Jainirian, who is known for his loyalty and constant public identification with the family of the Archbishop. Apostle John C. Suleiman also joined in the celebration as he wished her a happy birthday and outrightly described her as the woman who raised him. Margaret Idahoso was born on 29 July 1943 into a royal family in Benin Kingdom of Edo State, Nigeria. She is the first Nigerian woman to be ordained as Archbishop and the first female Chancellor of a university in Africa, Benson Idahoso University. Still on local scene, Apostle John C. Suleiman arrives in London for Open Heavens 2019. God's servant, Apostle John C. Suleiman, arrived in London, UK on Monday, 29th July for his Outreach Open Heavens. No doubt this happens to be a rare opportunity for people who live around the United Kingdom as the Restoration Apostle arrives in London for a two-day apostolic visitation. The conference, which is under the auspices of the restoration mandate for the year 2019, is tagged Open Heavens. The venue of the conference, which is the Lighthouse 262274, Camberwell, London, SE5, is already wearing a new look in preparation for this mighty invasion of God on lives and destinies around London. This invasion is recorded as the second visit to London this year. Also, the prophet of God is known for his depth of the world, world manifestations of the, of the power of God, strategic revelations and insight, outpour of the Holy Ghost, evidential in miracles, healings, breaking of holds, causes and battle, as well as release of financial open doors. He is coming on the visit with his senior pastors and other friends of his ministry from around the world. Moving on, on foreign, on local sense still, ministerial screening, Senate has okayed nominees today. The Senate will on Tuesday, which is today, confirm the appointment of ministerial nominees who pass its screening. But the People's Democratic Party, PDP, on Monday called on the Senate to send the nominees list to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, for further screening because some of the ex-governors and former ministers nominated by President Muhammad Buhari have corruption cases on their necks. The Red Chamber had, between Wednesday and Monday, screened 39 out of the 43 nominees forwarded to it by President Muhammad Buhari on Tuesday last week. The remaining nominees to be screened on Tuesday today are Sabo Nanuno Kanu, Lai Mohamed Kwari State, and Sela Mamam Tarabu State. The Senate President will preside over the plenary after the screening of the remaining three nominees and seek confirmation for each of the appointees, one after the other through voice votes on Tuesday, today also. The White Chamber is expected to proceed on annual two months recess after the confirmation. For delay factor, AKT Ondo, other pilgrims shut down in Loring Airport. About 500 intending pilgrims to the 2019 Holy Pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia from Ondo, Ekiti, Kwara and Oya states in the early hours of Monday disrupted activities at the Lauren International Airport to protest delayed flight to the Holy Land. The pilgrims who began their protest at about 3 a.m. blocked the Ilorin Obama Shore Ibadan Expressway and shut the gates to the airport, preventing workers from going in and out of the complex. They alleged that they had been in the Ilorin Harsh camp for 15 days without aircraft to lift them to Saudi Arabia and were subjected to poor and unhygienic conditions at the camp. Meanwhile, the acting manager of the airport, Mr. Deji Eniola, said the problem started by Medview Airline, which was appointed to convey them to Saudi Arabia. He said they had expected the airline in Ilorin since Saturday, adding that there is no explanation from the management of the airline on why it has not come to uh, lift the pilgrims. Coming up next is news from the foreign scene. Do well to stay with us. We're coming back shortly.
welcome to Foreign Scene on News Desk. Pakistan plane army aircraft crashes into residential area, killing 17 persons. At least 17 persons have been killed after a small military plane crashed into a residential area near the Pakistani city of Rawapindi. Five crew members and 12 civilians are dead, local media said, citing an army statement. Twelve people are also injured. The aircraft was on a recent training flight when it crashed and set off a fire which engulfed several houses. It was not immediately clear what caused the crash or what kind of aircraft it was. Rawapinda near the capital Islamabad is the site of the army's headquarters. The plane, which was part of the Pakistani Army's aviation unit, came down in the early hours of Tuesday. An army officer at the scene told news outlet Reuters that it hit the side of the building and the structure it crashed into completely collapsed. However, a crowd of local residents, some sobbing, gathering at the residential area where the incident occurred, a resident, Muhammad Sadiq, said he woke up to the sound of a huge explosion and people were screaming. They tried to help them, but the flames were too high and the fire too intense. Another resident said the plane appeared to be on fire even before it crashed. Senate fails to overturn Saudi arms sale veto. The U.S. Senate and has failed in its latest bid to block the controversial sale of $8.1 billion worth of weapons to Saudi Arabia. It comes after Donald Trump used his presidential veto to override resolutions passed by both chambers of Congress preventing the sale. Critics fear that weapons may be used to may be used on civilians in the Yemen conflict, but Mr. Trump had argued that blocking the sale of weapons would weaken America's global competitiveness. The president also argued that last week that it could damage relations with U.S. allies as they rejected the Batisid um, Bitatisan resolutions. However, a number of lawmakers, including some Senate Republicans, said there was no legitimate reason to bypass Congress. In Monday's first vote, five Republicans voted to override the president, siding with their Democrat colleagues 45 to 40. Fifteen senators abstained. Two further votes had similar margins. The Trump administration announced in May that it was proceeding with the sale of the weapons to Saudi Arabia and the United Arab